I grow in four different growing mediums. Light expanded clay aggregate, also known as Lika, 100% pure sphagnum moss, a bark mix of perlite, sphagnum moss, and fir bark, and I also grow mounted on cork, ceramic, wood, and plastic. I have not been growing um, mounted orchids for a long time, just about three years at this point. And one of the reasons I switched to growing some of my orchids, um, maybe 5% of them on mounts, was because I had quite a few orchids that did not do well um, when I put them in semi-hydro um, or in like say bark and pots. So this is one example, this Dendrobium wasselii that did not do well when it was growing uh, in a pot. So I have another one that's in semi-hydro and it's really not attached very well. Whereas with this one, um, I mounted it and you can see, so I mounted it over here, see the mounts starting over here, right? And you can see it basically grew out of the bit of moss that I put in to um, help keep the whole mount moist. And it's basically, as you can see from the side view, pushing away from the mount. So here's the new root right here, right? Beautiful new root tips coming in. And they're just way above, now growing down, and I don't know if they'll attach, um, but you know, this is quite far above the mount itself. So quite clearly, um, Dendrobium wenzelii does not want to have its roots buried at all and perhaps really wants to just be bare root. So in this case, the mount is really just for me to make it easier for me to keep it. So I just don't have a piece of orchid laying around like some kind of, you know, naked plant. But it quite clearly doesn't really want to be in anything. I have quite a few different types of orchids which are mounted and I have them mounted on different types of substrates. So right here you can see I have calumnias that are mounted and I actually asked the grower to mount these for me. And he mounts them on these little cedar planks and then he ties them on with pantyhose. He just cuts strips of pantyhose and then he basically just um, wraps the pantyhose around the way that you would wrap the end of a ponytail. Um, I also have some on wood and I just put them on the fishing line right here. Um, I really only have mounted orchids that have failed to uh, do well for me in like pots. So my Tlumnias in pots have really not done well. They don't bloom. Um, this set of Tlumnias right here, I started off with 10 and I think I have six left. So I'm not saying that I don't lose ones on mounts as well, but as you can see here, at least this way, it is blooming. Uh, other orchids that I have mounted um, are dendrobiums. This dendrobium is also mounted. Um, this one I received mounted and I didn't uh, unmount it. And let's see, what else do I have? That I okay, so I consider things in hanging baskets with their roots exposed, like this, um, Rinka stylus gigante alba, also to be mounted. So this is also mounted. Um, this, what I believe is Ascacenda mini autumn is also mounted. It's not really mounted. I clipped it to this wire and it's basically bare root hanging in the wind. But basically anything that's not like in a pot, um, I consider mounted and I grow them um, in a certain way. I treat them a certain way. Um, other orchids that are mounted, uh, well, these are all Cataleas that are mounted, but this Renanthera, um, I would consider it to be mounted. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's hanging loose in a basket with nothing. These Vandas right here, I would consider to be mounted because they're loose without anything. I have this Myrmicophila right here that's mounted. It 
So my mounts come in two types of mounting, um, not substrate, which is either cork or some kind of wood like cedar, but on whether they have moss around the roots or not. So this Catalea right here, which actually I just mounted this winter because I had it in semi-hydro and it wasn't doing well, um, has a bit of moss around to help keep the humidity up. But then I also have orchids, which are basically almost completely bare root. Or this one right here, this is on tree fern. Um, I received it on tree fern and this basically, there's nothing on this tree fern except for the orchid. And the orchid's actually not really even on the tree fern anymore. It's actually growing over the old parts of the orchid. See, that's, those are old bulbs. So the new bulbs are actually just on top of the old bulbs. You see that, see that yellow, that's all old bulbs. So see this orchid's just growing on top of itself. So that's a dendrobium. This is a dendrobium lodigasii. Um, I also have brassavolos mounted. This is an adosa. You see it's just on a piece of wood. I have other brassavolas that are mounted on these little plastic planks. I got these from um, Nat's orchids and these plastic planks are a new thing for him. So I thought I would try them out. But the big thing about orchids that I consider to be mounted are they don't have a lot of substrate or they just have a minimal amount of moss on them to uh, keep them moist. Um, for the Vanda Ascascenda types, I'm awfully often using Spanish moss to keep things moist. So you can see there's nothing in this one except for the Spanish moss. I have mounted a bunch of Catalea's on cork. And I did this with fishing line that I just tied them. And then all of these, because I knew I wouldn't water enough, is I put them on um, some moss around the roots. You can see this has moss. And they're doing okay. Um, but you could see right here, like on this Calais right here, that the Calais I've mounted, the ones that I picked are bifoliates that really want to have naked roots. And you can see here that this Calais has taken to growing just really right along the bark and hugging it, right? So it doesn't want to be in the moss. And that's why I switched these Calais to mounts because I was learning, as due to my failures to grow a clandier very well, that there were orchids that really wanted to be more bare, let them dry out faster. And the fact that these don't want to be in the moss really says, hey, I want to have my roots exposed to the world. And these are the ones that I chose to mount, and so far it's working out because they're doing better. So I resisted going to mounted orchids for a long time because I feel that growing orchids on mounts is a lot of work and I didn't have the time to spend that much um, time working with them. And the reason I say they take a lot of work is that mounted orchids need really high ambient humidity, um, like 70, 80% all the time. And they need to be watered all the time. They need to be watered every single day. And I don't have time to do that. There are three main ways to water orchids on mounts. You can do the bucket soaking technique, which basically means you take an orchid that's mounted, you stick it in a bucket of water. Often these I have added um, moss to help keep it moist and then you let it soak for a while and then you gotta hang it up to drip dry, right? And then you put it back. And I find that takes a lot of time and I don't have time to do that. So the other way to do that, um, so you keep an ambient humidity up with uh, the moss on the mount and then you're soaking it in the bucket every day is I take a spray bottle and I just spray the orchids like so to keep the ambient, to water them basically every day. And then I keep the ambient humidity in my growing area like 60% or more. And they do okay like this. Now there are orchids that don't do as well with that technique, such as this Renanthera and the Vandas, because missing the Vanda for the roots 
is really not enough for them um, every day. So I just spray them like this, and that's a little bit faster, but uh, it's not as good for the orchid. And if you look up there, you can see that I have some dead fans on that vanda, and it's really actually very dry looking um, because it's really not getting enough water. So that's how I water the majority of my mounts, whether they're on plastic plaques or on logs or on wood with moss. And that's why I put a little bit of moss on the orchids roots just to keep the humidity up. It's not to cover the roots. It is to just like absorb the water when I'm mixing so that um, the whole area near the orchid roots will stay um, more humid. One of the main reasons I switched to growing a few of my orchids mounted is Catalina clandiae because I just could not grow it um, in a pot. All right, so when I grew in a pot, it died. It died and it died. And I tried yeah, semi-hydro and it died. And then finally I was like, um, I hear they like to drop really quick. I hear they like to be a little bit hotter and drier. And I was like, I'm gonna try growing it mounted. And um, I was very generously given a few award-winning clandier by Bill Rogerson and they came mounted and I left them that way. In summary, I grow just a few of my orchids mounted because it's more work, uh, they're more difficult to water, and you have to pay closer attention to them to keep them moist if you can't maintain an ambient humidity of 60%. And therefore, I only grow those that really like to have their roots exposed uh, as mounts.